Hi, my name is Mark Miano. I'm our VP of Sales and Partnerships here at Glue.io. And welcome to Glue Academy, Video 6, Attribution Modeling. Today what we're going to do is cover attribution modeling, one of the most complex but also most important and question-riddled areas of the multi-channel industry, right? I do encourage you before you watch this video to watch video two. Frankly, if you can watch all the videos before this one as I've layered concepts on top of each other in order to get up to the sophisticated uh, presentation we're about to walk through today. But if you'd prefer to take the risk, please go ahead and, and stick around and watch. All right. Video six, attribution modeling. Attribution modeling. First, the definition. The art or science, depending on how you look at it, of assigning sales credit to different touch points in the customer journey. The purpose of this exercise is to allocate advertising resources, both time and money, in the most profitable way possible. Remember the two goals from video two, right? We want to attract the highest paying customers or the potentially highest paying customers. And then we want to upsell those customers to make sure that those customers that we acquired realize that full, that full high LTV potential. There is no perfect attribution model, guys. If you ever have someone tell you that, please run the other way. The attribution model that you should use should be dictated by what goal you are trying to achieve. Attribution modeling simply is a measurement system. And depending on what your goals are, you're going to need to measure your performance differently. Here's some questions to answer. How do I use my limited amount of advertising resources in the most profitable ways possible? What advertising strategies help me acquire the highest paying customers? What advertising strategies help me upsell those highest paying customers once I acquired them? These are some of those profound questions that are really, really hard to answer unless you have a glue on your side or at least some type of business intelligence effort. All right, the facts. One more time. There is no perfect attribution model. It's all should be dictated by the goals you're trying to achieve. Each model will have a strength and a weakness. Each model has a purpose and a place to be used and not to be used. Actually, you probably have a place not to use the model more than you will to, to actually use it. The way to go about this is I suggest reverse engineering your thought process and ask yourself, what am I trying to achieve? Are you trying to attract the highest paying customer or are you trying to upsell them? More often than not, using more than one model at a time provides the most value and will provide you the most answers to your questions. I'm going to be stressing one model over the other today, but uh, the more the merrier as long as you don't get that dreaded analysis paralysis. All right, the decision, right? Acquiring versus upselling. We are not talking about healthcare systems or utility companies. We are talking about multi-channel and e-commerce strategy. And it really boils down to these two goals. I can't stress it enough. Acquiring the right customer or the customer with the highest potential lifetime value, and then upselling that customer once we acquire them. These are where we're going to focus our uh, efforts on today. And again, video two, if you haven't seen it, I highly suggest you go back and watch that. The first model that we're going to talk about is probably what everyone is most used to, which is the last click attribution model because it's native in Google Analytics. This model assigns sales credit of the specific order to the channel and or campaign clicked right before that order. For example, John Doe clicks Facebook before his first sale and buys. Facebook gets credit for that first purchase. Two months later, John Doe comes back through the direct channel and buys a second time. Direct gets credit for that second purchase, not Facebook, because direct was clicked before the second order, right? The order and the channel clicked right before that order are linked together. Strength, uh, this mode is okay for upselling. It helps frame an understanding of where customers like to spend cash with you. Uh, the main question is what I'm trying to say is that, that it answers is, what channels generate me the most cash? Straight up. Weakness, orders don't buy things, people do. So when you're tying all the marketing data and customer behavior to the order instead of the customer, the result is the merchant opening him or herself up to make decisions based on correlations and anomaly 
instead of real data or real customer data. Let's think about that for a moment, right? Here's a situation. It's March 31st. So Q1 is finishing up and a merchant wants to optimize their ad spend heading into Q2. Well, via a last click model, they see that 80% of their revenue came from Facebook so far this year and 10% came from AdWords and 10% came from Bing. Wow, okay. What the last click isn't showcasing though is that 60% of that Facebook revenue came from a wholesaler who just so happened to click a Facebook ad out of convenience to place a major, major order, right? He was just sitting there, oh, I got to re-up on my, on my warehouse. Let me come in through Facebook and drop 100K with my partner. Does that mean the merchant, when he look at, looks at his last click and sees that 80% of his revenue is coming from Facebook, does that mean he abandons AdWords and Bing? Of course not. What is the likelihood of another merchant doing this? Probably extremely, extremely low. And even if the merch, another wholesaler did that, I mean, still it wouldn't end our decision to diversify our ad spend across multiple channels, right? So this is what I mean by uh, making decisions based on anomaly and what often happens when you rely just on the last click. Pre-purchase attribution models. You'll hear the uh, DMP systems here. Google 360, Adobe Audience Manager. These systems are very, very expensive. They are awesome though. This is signed sales credit of the customer to touch points before and after the first purchase. So for example, John Doe spent $300 with a merchant, let's say. Leading up to that sale, John Doe clicked three things. He clicked YouTube once, Pinterest once, Facebook once, and then bought. What this model could do if you do have a digital management platform um, or DMP system is it could allocate the monies however you want. In this case, what if we allocated that $300, we allocated a third of that $300 to each of these three touch points? That would be helpful to understand, right? The full customer journey. Strength, definitely the most flexible and transparent way of understanding how to allocate advertising resources. Weakness. It's insanely expensive. It is nuts. It's also, also, uh, it's also very complex. What I'm trying to say is the marginal return for an investment into an attribution model system like this is typically not worth it for companies making you know, less than like nine or 10 figures a year. It, it's, just, it's just not worth it. And it's also unnecessary because you have glue. <laughs> The model that we like to use is a first purchase attribution model. It's our intellectual property, and I'll call it the most practical attribution model. This assigns all the revenue credit generated by John Doe to the channel and or campaign clicked right before John Doe's first purchase. So for example, John Doe clicks Facebook before his first sale and buys. Facebook gets credit for that first purchase. Two months later though, John Doe comes back through the direct channel and buys a second time. Facebook gets credit for that second purchase too, not the direct, because Facebook got Joe, John Doe to buy originally. Strength. This is the most practical and efficient way of understanding how to allocate advertising spend when accomplishing the two goals we outlined in video two, which is attracting the potentially highest paying customers and then upselling those customers once we acquired them. Weakness, it doesn't provide the pre-purchase data, but again, the marginal return on such an investment usually isn't realized unless you're deep, deep into the tens of millions of dollars. Let's put this into action, okay? So if I'm in glue.io, I'm gonna go to orders first, and I'm gonna go to order list just to give you a little foil here to think of a last click model. So I got the order ID, right? I got my order, and then the channel campaign source device clicked right before that order. Just note, you have to export a CSV file here to get to the true last click data. But what I'm trying to demonstrate is the order and the customer touch point are linked together. And the marketing data revolves around the customer, right? Not the order. So that's what I mean by the last click model being good for understanding of where your cash is coming from overall, but it's not a customer centric level of data. Through most of Glue, you're going to find a first purchase attribution model. And you're clearly seeing it here in performance overview. 
and here's revenue by channel, net profit by channel. Or let's say it's May and I'm John Doe. I come in through Facebook for the first time and buy. Facebook gets credit for that sale. It's November. I come in through direct and buy a second time through direct. Facebook still gets credit for my sale as John Doe because Facebook got me to buy originally. If I come back here to the customer list area, you'll see even throughout all of Glue, I have my email and then I have the channel campaign device and source clicked right before David Robinson's first purchase. So we'll carry that first purchase model with each particular customer all the way through the system forever. Great. We still got a problem though. Just like orders don't buy things, channels don't buy things either. Right? So revenue by channel, net profit by channel. I want you to think of this as a report card. We don't make decisions or we don't study for a test as a student by studying our report card, right? A report card is a demonstration on if we studied, paid attention in class, all that good stuff. Same thing here. We're not going to make decisions based on our report card or our reporting. Instead, we're going to go to customer's lifetime value and we're going to make decisions based on lifetime value and real customer data instead. Now, we should be having an aha moment right here. The first purchase model is the most practical model because it's the only model that allows us to assign a lifetime value to an advertising strategy. That's super important. Also think of the concept that it's way cheaper to upsell a current customer than to buy a new one. These two concepts are really important to understand when it comes to um, making sure that you are got your head right when thinking of how to allocate your ad spend effectively and when you're looking at the first purchase model. If I come back over here to lifetime value, I'm just going to review this video too a little bit. Remember, LTV is rising super fast. We're saturating our market. We need to attract higher paying customers or, or high paying customers. And that new customer acquisition is going to put healthy downward pressure on the LTV of my store, laying down a strong foundation of growth moving into the future. Am I flattening out? Well, it's cheaper to upsell a current customer than to buy a new one. So I'm going to upsell if my LTV is plateauing, right? Now let's take a look at the LTV profitability by channel table. First of all, this table has about 10 disparate sources being blended together in order to get to the insights that we're providing. And this is definitely one of the biggest gems of Glue. So let's take a look. In the past year, look at the date picker, I have 879 plus 671, about 1,500 people who have bought from me right here in the past year who first bought from email. 879 of those people have bought once. 671 of those people have bought more than once. Cumulatively, these people have a LTV of $257 each. In contrast, I have about 964 people who have bought in the past year who have bought first from affiliate. 959 of these people have bought once and five have bought more than once. Let's say that it's time to acquire customers, right? My LTV is spiking and I need to knock that LTV down through strategic acquisition. Well, what I'm going to see is that people who convert first from email spend the most amount of money with me. So I'm going to invest from an acquisition standpoint into the channel that is bringing me the highest paying customers. And when I do this, the new customers will rise faster in my higher LTV advertising strategy than my lower one. Each new customer starts with an LTV of zero. And that will drive down the LTV of that higher LTV strategy. And what you're going to see is you're going to be squeezing the efficiencies out of your advertising spend and this number will drop down to somewhere in the middle. And then next time it's time to acquire, you're going to do the same thing. What if though I need to boost my LTV of my store? Well, look, look at the people who bought first from affiliate. Only five of these 960 something people have bought more than once. There'd be massive ROI going to these 959 first purchasers 
and upselling them and boosting the LTV of this particular advertising strategy, right? And I can do that by going to customer list. Maybe I say number of orders equals one, channel is affiliate. And I can now target those 950 something people who have only bought once from me and have a tremendously high ROI, a tremendously high uh, 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 specifics in the messaging to these people to treat them differently in order to gain a great ROI on my advertising investment. Great. Now, a couple of cool stories for you. Um, I work with a um, home automations company. Okay, they sell like electronic doorbells and stuff. And what we he saw here is his Bing channel had 600 people who bought from him, and they each had an LTV of like $900. And he had like 6,000 people who bought first from AdWords, and they spent a third with him. Two action points there. Number one, move acquisition monies out of AdWords and into Bing because there are higher paying customers waiting for you for him in Bing than AdWords as the Bing market isn't as saturated as the Ad, AdWords market. The second thing that he understood was that maybe an older demographic appreciates his electronic doorbell technology more so than the younger demographic since older demographics tend to use Bing a little bit more uh, than younger people do. Pretty cool. The last thing I'll do, guys, is I'm going to click into one of these channels, and you're going to see very similar data, but on a campaign and source level. Even on a campaign and source level, Glue is using a first purchase model because it's more expensive to acquire a new customer than to upsell one. So when you're looking at your data here in the campaigns, know that we're still using a first purchase model. And by switching from a first purchase model to a last click model, you'll clearly be able to find action points to help you understand how to sharpen the tip of your advertising strategy. All right. Well, it's been real. We'll see you in video seven. Um, but if you have any questions, please give us a call. A lot of these conversations are best had one-on-one -on -one, since every company is different. Uh, but we're very passionate about your business and look forward to working with you.